for Club 99. Thank you, President Peacock. Good afternoon, Rotarians. I would like to first just give a quick shout out to Chief Hubbard. He and I have a good bond together. Our daughters um, play volleyball together at Central High School and they are dear friends. And so it's a real honor for me to be here today with him and for this event. Um, I'm also honored to stand um, in for Molly McNulty today and introduce our newest Club 99 member, Kellen Davis, who is sponsored by Jay Cheshire. If y'all wanna come up. You're not Jay. <laughs> Penny Gibbs is standing in. Um, Kellen is a native of Hot Springs and a graduate of Arkansas State University with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and a Master's of Public Administration. He has worked in fundraising at the United Way and was recently named the Executive Director of the Little Rock Regional Chamber of Commerce's Leadership Greater, Greater Little Rock Program, continuing the great work of Judy Love and Melinda Moody. Kellen and his wife, Neil, Nell, excuse me, Nell, are expecting their first child, a son, in December. Kellen enjoys golfing, hunting, and hiking. Please help me welcome our newest member, Kellen Davis. And one last thing while I have your attention, the Camp Aldersgate Fish Fry is this Sunday. So if you are interested in volunteering, there's still time to do that. Please see me after the meeting or text or call or email me. We would love to have you. It's going to be an awesome event. So thank you very much. Thank you, Wendy. And to that point, uh, President-elect nominee Jason Chaco is gonna give a little bit more about how you can get involved more than just volunteering. <laughs> we would love to have everybody out this Sunday to volunteer. Thank you for that, Wendy. But I also want to make a plea to everybody here. We all meet for lunch. We all are citizens who donate our time. There's no better way to combine that than to come as a guest at the Camp Aldersgate Fish Fry. So it's 11 to 3 on Sunday. Tickets are $20 a piece. We have people that have 50 tickets outside to sell. You can also use the tickets, uh, use the QR code in front of me. Uh, so that you can buy the tickets online. We would love to see everybody out there. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Wendy. Um, our membership streak is still alive at 12 weeks. Congrats to Kel and welcome to Club 99. Uh, Rachel O'Neill will join us next for a members in the news update. And then we'll have our membership appreciation videos by Melissa Hendricks. So, hey, Rich. Well, Wendy and Jason gave me the perfect lead in to my news today. So, uh, as most of you know, I'm the editor of High Profile and I cover events for a living. And I just wanted to let you guys know that there are almost 30 events still remaining between now and November 5th. Uh, the fish fry is one of them on my list. Tonight also, uh, we have the Economic Arkansas 60th Anniversary Celebration at the Governor's Mansion, the Argenta Community Theater Grand Opening Gala honoring Sharon Heflin tonight at the theater, tomorrow's Bolo Bash for, UA, for Baptist Hospital, then Thursday, UALR 100 Centennial Campaign kickoff, Saturday, Black Hall of Fame, Sunday, we've already talked about it, Camp Aldersgate Fish Fry. Next Thursday, Blue Jeans and Bubbles for Ronald McDonald House. Same night, the first Arkansas Press Freedom Gala at the Wally Allen Ballroom. Also Thursday, Life Quest Founders Day at Benign Israel Temple. And Celebrate Maya is coming back in person that same night. I forgot where that is, somewhere. Saturday, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation Finest Gala. Tuesday of the 25th, Friends of Children Luncheon honoring or benefiting Arkansas Advocates for Children. Thursday, the 27th, 
You have Spectacular, UALR, and AED, AEDD Hogs for a Cause. That Friday, the 28th, you will have Women of Inspiration Lifetime Achievement celebrating Susan Hutchinson and Monster Bash. Uh, that, that is a benefit for Home for Healing. The 29th, Historic Arkansas Museum Candlelight Gala. Uh, I'm not gonna read every one of these to you, but starting in early November, you have the events for uh, um, car ties, starting with the Sugar Plum Ball, which I understand it sold out in 10 minutes. And the Car Ties Festival of Fashion is the next day on November 4th. And then the granddaddy of them all, November 5th. You have Opus at the state capitol or the Capitol Hotel. Right across the street, you have Car Ties Tucks and Trees. And in the Marriott, you have the ATA Master Ceremony, all within that one little tiny section of town. That's what I think you need to know today. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Melissa Hendricks with the Membership Engagement Committee. We're excited to continue our membership engagement videos and we have two to present to you today. Please enjoy. Did you know in the 60 year history of Economics Arkansas that there have only been five executive directors and that three of us are members of Club 99? It is such a treat to come to meetings and to see Sonia Murphy and Sue Owens. Today, I wanna to recognize one of those ladies. Sue, you have been such a great resource for Club 99. What a great job you've done this year with programs. I have learned about some incredible things, like how important the bee is and how logistics work in Amazon. And now I've got an appetite for some Kobe beef from Saracen Casino. Thank you for your work on this committee. And thank you also for being a friend and for being a mentor and for continuing to provide support at Economics Arkansas. I feel so lucky to know you. Thank you, Sue. What a lovely honor it is to be recognized by someone in Rotary but it's even more special to recognize a Rotarian that I've known for many years. This person actually inspired me to join Club 99. He has been a Rotarian almost 35 years. He's a Paul Harris Fellow. He received a Distinguished Service Award from the North Little Rock Club, and he also served as president for that club in 2005, 2006. He's served on many committees over those 35 years, but some of the more memorable experiences include when he and his wife hosted a young woman from Japan as part of the North Little Rock Rotary Exchange. He also has chaired the scholarship committee for Club 99, and he enjoys serving on the Ottenheimer Committee to host activities for students. He began attending Rotary with his father, which really planted a seed for a lifetime of service. I can truly say that Rotary is in his heart. Thank you for this opportunity to let me recognize Ed Owens, my sweet husband of 25 years. Ed is a kind, gentle soul who is also hysterically funny if you don't know him, but he is someone who endeavors to live the four-way test every day of his life. Thank you. We kept that a surprise for you, Ed, congrats. And same to you, Sue, congratulations to you both. Um, the uh, thank you also to uh, Rachel for the events. One that you didn't mention that I wanna talk about is the District 6150 Foundation Banquet that we want all of you to come to. Uh, that's gonna be on October 27th at the uh, Heifer Campus. And we will be, um, learning a lot more about the 20th anniversary of our Romania project. Uh, that's with Heifer, that was uh, one of our signature projects and it still continues to this day. So you'll learn a little bit more about that. And we get to honor our own Club 99er, uh, District Governor David Men. So please make an effort to join us that night. We do have a few seats available still at our Club 99 tables that we've purchased uh, on your behalf. So you can come 
and it's already paid for. So we want you to come check us out. We're not even asking you to buy a ticket. So please make an effort to join us uh, on October 27th. Let Karen or Lel know if you want one of those spots because I'm, I'm sure they'll be gone quickly. So please let her know if you'd like to join. Um, thank you, Melissa, for bringing back our videos. I think that's a lot of fun. We want to continue to do those. We would have done three, but Ed, we didn't want you to know that you were being honored until today. Okay, and now to our Little Rock Fire Appreciation Awards program. As we get started, I'd like to say a special word of thanks to our presenting sponsor, Arvest Bank. Thank you, Arvest Bank. Uh, and to all our sponsors, Arkansas Business, Baptist Health, Centennial Bank, Ellen Cockrell, Dennis Hunt, Past President Hank Kelly, Past President Greg Hatcher, McDonald's, Dan Parker, Parish Delivery Services, and Snell Prosthetics. So thank you to all the sponsors of this year's Fire Awards. We are most grateful for their generous support as we pay tribute to firefighters and personnel who are at our beck and call around the clock. Thank you very much. To get things underway, here is Elizabeth Cloxton, the chair of this year's Fire Awards. Uh, she is the co-chair of the Police and Fire Awards Committee. As you may know, uh, this year for the first time, we've the second time we've split up the awards, but it's the first time we've ever had a co-chair for a fire award and a co-chair for the police awards. And Drew Harper will be uh, chairing that part of the committee uh, on January 31st. So please mark the date for that. But as we get started to honor our firefighters today, Elizabeth, please join us. Thank you. Thank you, President Denver. Um, good afternoon, all. As Denver said, I'm Elizabeth Clogston, and it is a privilege and honor for me to help recognize some of our city's amazing firefighters who do everything from rush into burning buildings to save lives of people they never met to teaching us all about fire safety. As President Peacock stated, this is Fire Prevention Week, which was founded 100 years ago in 1922 by the National Fire Protection Association in honor of the great 1871 Chicago fire. Did you know that in 2021, local fire departments responded to an estimated 1.35 million fires in the United States? These fires caused 3,800 civilian fire deaths and 14,700 reported civilian fire energy injuries. The property damage caused by these fires was estimated at nearly $16 billion. On average in 2021, a fire department responded to a fire somewhere in the U.S. every 23 seconds. We are here today to acknowledge the men and women of the Little Rock Fire Department who are selflessly and courageously protecting us when things don't go as planned. We are grateful for their service and appreciate their dedication. To help us honor these exceptions, exceptional people, I am pleased to introduce Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr., our fellow Rotarian and member of Club 99. Mayor, please say a few words regarding this important event. Thank you so much. I wanna take this time uh, to recognize city directors, Doris Wright and Lance Hines, who are here with us today representing the city board of directors and I'm very grateful for their leadership. Uh, today is about our Little Rock Fire Department. As a son of a retired firefighter, I spent a lot of time, many holidays uh, at Station 4 and Station 20. And I can tell you uh, that you do not get enough appreciation. I want you to know uh, from the bottom of my heart, I think I can speak on behalf of City Director Lance Hines, City Director Wright, is that how much we appreciate you as a city, how much everyone here today appreciates you. Uh, because you are the epitome of protection, you are the epitome of servant leadership, and you are the epitome of community service. We want you to know how much we appreciate you because you're putting your life on the line each and every day to protect, serve, and guard the state capital city, and we're grateful. We also are very grateful that you all are not only great guardians, great servant leaders, and great community servants, uh, but also you've done a stellar job as it relates to your professionalism. And that's the reason why we're happy and so proud that the Little Rock Fire Department just recently received yet again, another national accreditation. Last year also received ISO-1. If you don't know what that is, it keeps our insurances low. And we are very 
uh, grateful for that hard work under the leadership of Chief Delphon Hubbard. And again, we know that many times, many people don't tell you thank you enough. And we want you to know on behalf of the city of Little Rock, on behalf of everyone here today, how much we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. And I wanna add my thanks to the mayors for the city director Wright and for Vice Mayor Hines being here today. Um, next, I'm proud to introduce our Little Rock Fire Department Chief Hubbard to share a few remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Delphon Hubbard, the fire chief here for the city of Little Rock. Uh, it's a privilege and it's an honor to serve you. Uh, but one of my firefighters asked me earlier, he says, Chief, you're not eating, are you nervous? And I said, no, I'm not nervous. I'm like the biggest cheerleader for the Little Rock Fire Department. I, I think that's my responsibility. I have to continuously uh, remind our personnel what a great job they do every day. The number, the minimum number of uh, complaints from the community in regards to our personnel is unbelievable. We don't have to address those kind of issues because you, I assure you, you have professional, good-hearted individuals serving this community day in and day out. Every night at 2 a.m. while you're sleeping so peacefully in your bed, they're sitting there waiting, waiting on your call, saying, I'll go, I'll take care of it. And I appreciate them. And for someone outside of the organization to, uh, such as Club 99, as we have here today, saying, we appreciate you, I'm saying thank you on their behalf. And, and many times the simplest things mean the most. The simplest things mean the most. Uh, there are many times they, they go all day, a 24 hour shift and may work 18 of those hours out of the 24. So you can count the amount of rest that they have been able to acquire during that time period, the amount of uh, relaxation food they've had to, uh, had a chance to eat. But for an outside entity, an external partner, such as Club 99 to say this, we appreciate you. I I'm telling you, it's just unbelievable. And I'm so grateful and appreciative of this organization for doing that. And I'll close with this because this is all about them. It's not about Delphine and Hubbard Departure. Chief. Uh, this is really about those great people that serve you. I read where they say, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And today I say thank you to Club 99 because you have truly displayed how much you care about your Little Rock Fire Department. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, appreciate you being here today with us. Uh, Directors Wright and Hines, thank you as well. We will salute several notable award winners from the fire department here in person with us today. But we also wanna recognize other award recipients who are being honored virtually. So if you'll turn your attention to the screen, you will see the names of our performance service ribbon honorees this year. Dispatcher Joe Whaler, Captain Jacob Lear Sadowski, Battalion Chief Andrew Shelby, Captain Jeremy Barber, Captain Jeff Fryer, Chief Brady Jones, and retired Chief Bob Hunthrop. Those are our performance service ribbons. Thank you. We'd also like to recognize the Little Rock firefighters and MEMS employees who received life-saving awards this year. We recognize those receiving the Citizen Life-Saving and Good Samaritan Awards. We salute them for their bravery, courage, and instincts that saved numerous lives throughout our community this past year. In moments of crisis, they rose to the occasion and were able to save someone's life right here in our community. 
Special thanks and bravo to these brave men and women. They deserve to have their name said out loud, so I'm going to, if you'll bear with me. Um, Officer Scott Detmer, Captain Stephen White, Engineer Andrew Decker, and Firefighter Donald Raglan, Captain Joseph Kuffel, Acting Engineer Jerry Martin, and Firefighter Michael Patton, Captain Matthew Bradford, Firefighter Antonio Jordan, Firefighter Rashad Moss, and MEMS crew, Jim Palatisidis and Colin Shearer. Engineer Derek King, Firefighter Ryan McCormick, Captain Joseph Kuffel, Acting Engineer Jerry Martin and Firefighter Michael Patton. And with the Citizen Lifesaving Awards, those were all, by the way, lifesaving medals. With the Citizen Lifesaving Awards, Christina Rayleigh, Leslie Zavada, and Tawan Holmes. Congratulations. Before I turn it back over to Elizabeth to present our top awards, I'd like to recognize unit citations to engine 24, engine 16, and engine 10. While Battalion Chief Valden Holmes of engine 24 received a letter of commendation. Firefighter Benjamin Bradford of Engine 2 received an individual citation. We also want to recognize Captain Casey Jones, who received the Meritorious, Meritorious Service Medal. And Captain Jones has been with the department for more than 15 years. He has instructed other firefighters at multiple national conferences, written articles for several firehouse magazines, and has become one of the only individuals in our state to hold the same accreditation as the department. All of these incredible men and women deserve special recognition. Our heartfelt congratulations to all. One more time, I'd like to thank the sponsors uh, who have made it possible for us to not only give these awards, but also to add a little bit extra to them. And so I uh, appreciate all of you for doing this. Uh, presenting sponsor, Arvest Bank. And then we have other sponsors were Arkansas Business, Baptist Health, Centennial Bank, Ellen Cockrell, Dennis Hunt, Hank Kelly, Greg Hatcher, McDonald's, Dan Parker, Parish Delivery Services and Snell Prosthetics. Thank you all very much. Now, Elizabeth will present the, uh, the top awards for the year. We are thrilled to once again honor Little Rock Fire Department's Recruit of the Year. This recruit displayed good moral character and respect even during difficult moments. His attitude towards serving the citizens as well as the members of the department in a professional manner should be mod modeled by all. We are pleased to honor the Little Rock Fire Department Recruit of the Year to probationary firefighter, Jamani Jones. Yes.
Congratulations, Firefighter Jones. Our next award is the Gavin Wright Resilience Award. Captain Wright lost his battle with colon cancer in 2013, and this award is given in his honor and memory. This firefighter has performed her duties with the highest regards and is an example of what a firefighter should strive to be each shift. During her time on the job, she has had to withstand multiple hardships in her personal life and through each trial, she has maintained a positive attitude and continues to improve herself each day. The, nom the nominator said that on a personal note, she has been an inspiration each shift. She always has a smile and great personality, which she shows to each and every person, Engine 17 encounters. On structure fires, she is a steady rock that does not shy away from the tough jobs and is always ready to act. At the station, she shows great patience with new recruits and is always there to give assistance and advice on how to improve. Through her work ethic and the example she displays every day, she improves the crew of Engine 17 from captain to new recruit. For that, we are proud to honor firefighter Sylvia Scott with the Gavin Wright Resilience Award. Congratulations, Firefighter Scott. Our next honoree is receiving an Operational Excellence Award. This individual was nominated due to his leadership attributes, attributes and willing effort to complete ongoing responsibilities above his rank. He has stepped into the acting officer position twice in the past two years. During both times, he has been tasked with training a new recruit, a task which is normally the responsibility of a company officer. We are proud to honor Engineer Russell Lewis with an Operational Excellence Award. The department would like to commend Engineer Lewis for his dedication to our profession and his willingness to pass on knowledge to future firefighters in our department. Congratulations, Engineer Lewis. This year, the Little Rock Department has two persons of the year. These individuals were nominated by none other than Chief Hubbard and make up the department's accreditation bureau. Only 300 fire departments out of more than 30,000 departments worldwide are internationally accredited. During the last calendar year, the Little Rock Fire Department was preparing to go through its reaccreditation process with the Commission on Fire Accreditation International. It is a thorough assessment of the department's response capabilities, staffing levels, and levels of services. Led by Bo Hager and Tori Simons, the accreditation team worked tirelessly over this past 12 month period, collecting data, completing all necessary documentation, arranging personnel interviews, conducting community surveys, and acting as the Little Rock Fire Department's liaison with the accreditation commission. These tasks are usually performed by a much larger number of personnel in other jurisdictions with a much longer time frame, which was shortened due to COVID. Their consistency, commitment, and dedication was truly a display of the mission of the fire department. Their work not only has a positive impact on the fire services, but the Little Rock community as a whole. The Little Rock Fire Department was originally accredited in 2017 and now has been reaccredited for a second cycle in 2022. Congratulations, Captain Bo Hager and data analyst Tori Simons for being the Little Rock Department Persons of the Year for 2022. Simmons, I'm sorry. 
Sorry, it's uh, it's analyst Simmons. Sorry about that. CMs there. The annual marquee award for the Little Rock Fire Department is Firefighter of the Year. In nominating this firefighter, Captain Casey Jones said, resilience, attitude, teammate. These terms were used to describe this firefighter from the outside departments that voted for our Firefighter of the Year award. She also received three separate letters of commendation from company officers throughout the year, remarking, remarking on her notable work ethic. Having seen her dedication and positive spirit myself during her recruit training, I can confirm the qualities highlighted here. This firefighter has shown just that just simply showing up as a consistent human being and putting in hard work when the time arises can be just as important as firefighting and saving lives. Her example is something every member of our department should strive to emulate. Well done and thank you for reminding all of us that, quote, this is the best damn job in the world, <laughs> end quote. Ladies and gentlemen, Rotarians and guests, we are honored to recognize as the Little Rock Department 2022 Firefighter of the Year, Firefighter Sylvia Scott. We would like to say a very special thank you to Sissy's Log Cabin for donating a beautiful watch in recognition of her outstanding service. I am also pleased to announce Club 99 is making a monetary award to the winners of each of the department's five top awards. Thank you all again for being here today as we take a moment to recognize these exceptional public servants. We are so appreciative to your service and sacrifice. Before turning it back over to President Peacock, I want to thank Captain Hager with the Little Rock Fire Department who was huge help in today's awards. Finally, thank you President Peacock and the Rotary Club of Board of Directors, Executive Director Karen Fetzer and Associate Director Lael Foster. We could not do it without you. I cannot thank you all enough for your guidance, support, and assistance. I now turn it back over to President Peacock. Thank you, Elizabeth. Great job as co-chair. Thank you very much. A special thanks to the Fire and Police Awards Committee. You guys are amazing. Thank you for your service to Club 99. But more importantly, thank you to all the firefighters, the brave men and women who serve us every day. Congratulations to all of you. You guys, really, really special for us to be able to do this every year. Uh, it's important to us as a club that we're able to do this. I've talked about my year as president about illuminating the rock and all the ways that we 
serve each other as a club and how we serve our community and illuminating the light for a young child who's learning how to read for the first time through our literacy efforts, through our mentoring programs and our adoption of the Dunbar Magnet Middle School, the program we do with them and how we light the light in those young people, the college scholarships that we give away and how we light the lights in those who are gonna have an opportunity to go to college or to stay in college and get a degree, but in also on how we shine a light on the good works that our police and fire uh, personnel, firefighters and personnel do every year. We are grateful as a club to be able to serve you and shining the light on all your good work. So thank you for allowing us to join you in illuminating the rock. Thank you. As, as I said earlier, uh, co-chair Drew Harper, I saw him earlier, see there. Okay, Drew Harper, you're up next. Police awards will be January 31st. So you guys put that down. Uh, and Elizabeth could take a break and you step up and lead the committee for that one. All right, Drew, fair enough. All right. <laughs> um, as I've said about our year as Illuminating the Rock, we are giving speaker gifts to all our speakers this year. And you guys be sure you sign the board out front before you leave. And to all of you who got awards, be sure we get your photo in front of our board before you leave. So please don't run off. But as part of our year, we're giving away gifts to our speakers, uh, a symbolic gesture uh, for our work we're doing with literacy in our community. And these books are by Little Rock Connected Authors. There's a wide assortment of them, half a dozen or so, that we're giving out to all our speakers throughout the year. And what we're gonna do at the end of the year, we're gonna give several of these to all of our area elementary school libraries and resource centers. And in the, in the list of on the side of the book cover will be every speaker for this year for Rotary for 22-23. And so as a gesture of our appreciation, we wanna give these Illuminate the Rock books today to our Chief Hubbard and Mayor Scott. Thank you for joining us today. Chief Hubbard. Since uh, Chief Hubbard is not a member of Club 99, yet he can get a special pin uh, illuminate the rock pin but mayor scott already has one so thank you so much congratulations sir. Yeah. yes sir uh -huh. and mayor scott all right next week district 6150 governor and Club 99 or David Menz will join us right here at the Clinton Center. So please make an effort to join us uh, to hear what he has to share about all the work that the district is doing throughout 6150 and how we can be a part of making our entire district a success. Uh, we're very, very excited uh, that David Menz, a fellow Club 99er, is leading the charge this year. And I hope all of you will make an effort to join us next week as well as joining us for the district banquet, foundation banquet on the 27th. Uh, and with that, we will see you next Tuesday at the Clinton Center and we are adjourned.